Welcome to the fight game with Ice Water and Puma. And we're going to start out with some of the fights coming up on the 8th. And there's a fight that I'm interested in, Ice, with Carlos Ocampo versus Sebastian Fendor. Uh, Fendor is a tall glass of water. But how do you think that fight's going to go on Showtime? Well, you know, uh, uh, Fendor is real tall for welterweight. Uh, we saw him banging, uh, you know, in his last couple fights. And he's a hard guy to figure out. But I think that his opponent, though, has not lost or he's only lost like one fight. I don't know the, the record, but he's a tough customer. The only thing about Fendora, and we saw that, I'm trying to think, we, uh, he fought Lubin, right? Mm -hmm. He fought Lubin. And versus Lubin, he, he, Lubin was giving him all he had. And he caught him a couple of times with uppercuts, but uh, Fendora has a big chin. So you come in thinking you're going to get him because he's going to get sloppy. He's very sloppy at times. He leans all over you. He doesn't fight like a big fella. He likes to get in and mix it up with these little guys. He, instead of standing out like you would see like a Thomas Hearns and jab, 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 and then throw that right in, that's not Fendora. And then, which I think it will get him hurt against uh, other higher caliber people. Yes. But against some of these little guys, he, he's exciting all the way. Um I just need to see what's going to happen. I think Lubin's good. He's, his, his size causes a major problem. But the other guy's no slouch. I think it's a great test for him because, you know, uh, Fendora wants to move up. And uh, talk, he tried to mention them, one of them Charlo names. I'm like, ooh. Um, so Carlos Campo, or Campo is um, 22 and 1, 13 knockouts. Yeah. Um, and so uh, you have Fendora, who's 19 and 0 with 13 knockouts, one draw. And so, um, so it, it should be an interesting fight. Um, so I, I'm looking forward to it. But you're right about uh, Fendora. He he doesn't really use his reach a lot sometimes when he should use his reach, and he kind of tries to mix it up. I, I think he's going to mix it up with the wrong person, and they're going to just knock him clean out. I I really think that's going to happen. So um, we'll see what happens in, in that fight upcoming. Next fight on tap um, on the eighth also is Chris Eubanks Jr. against Connor Ben. Um, that should be an interesting fight. And um, looking at the tail of the tape, bro, it's a 12-round welterweight fight. You got uh, Connor Ben, 20 and 0, 13 knockouts against Chris Eubanks Jr., 31 and 2, with 23 knockouts. Um, so uh, these guys have some knockout powers. So who do you see edging who? And well, you know, Connor Ben's more as a prospect, right? People have been waiting for him to take these bigger fights. Uh, what's interesting to me is the fact that it's at a catch weight at 157. So mm -hmm. let me see what happens there. Chris Eubanks Jr. is no, there's no slouch. So I don't know which way I'm leaning. I mean, Chris Eubanks Jr. has the more of the experience, but um, this is the opportunity that uh, Ben said he wants. So I, I'm just excited for the fight. I mean, I, I could go one way or the other. Like, uh, I'm not going to do that. But I, I think it's going to be a hell of a fight because one guy wants to prove himself that he's finally rising to the next level. Other guy wants to kind of come off the mat and go, I'm still here. I'm still good enough. And I'm going I'm to uh, show you by taking on this younger guy. All right. So the next fight on tap is Robert Helenas versus Deontay Wilder. Deontay Wilder making his way back in the ring after uh, losing to uh, <clears throat> Fury uh, a few months ago. And so this is a 12 round heavyweight fight. So uh, it's in the Barclays Centers in Brooklyn. It should be um, a, a, a nice little showcase for both fighters. Um, you have Deontay Wilder, 42 and two, Robert Helena's 30 and three, uh, but you have the, uh, the knockout King, I call him. He has, uh, Deontay Wilder has 41 uh, knockouts in his fight. So um, what do you see in this particular fight between these two opponents? Well, I mean, Helena's is going to come in with all he has, but uh, I think a lot of people want to see this fight because they want to see, is the old Deontay Wilder back? Mm -hmm. Does he come back with, you know, everybody put down and put him down and called him everything but a child of God when he lost to Fury, you know, allegedly so many times. But uh, I said then that I thought that every boxer sometimes had their own kryptonite, right? And I think Fury just had a way, he knew a style, he along with the, uh, you know, with the sugar man over there in the corner, you know, doing this thing. Uh, 
they found a way to, to take down uh, Wilder. And I don't think it's as easy as people think. I don't think they give him credit because you lose to a very solid champion. I still think uh, Fury's the best heavyweight and he proved to that to you right now. But uh, I think Wilder, you're not too many other people I don't think can be Wilder. Mm -hmm. I think he's going to show you. You'll find out if he's back to his old style of maybe throw a little boxing like he did in the last fight with uh, Fury. I, I, I actually watched that fight again um, a few days ago. Yeah. It was a pretty uh, knock him out, drag out fight. It wasn't like, you know, Fury was just dominating the whole time. Right. But let's be real. When you said you watched that fight, you watched the, the intensity, you watched the damage that both guys endured. Yeah. During, I believe there's not going to be, there's not going to be many people that can bang like that with, with Wilder. And, and I think that's where he's going to have the upper hand. A lot of people say he's a one trick pony, can only do this, do that. But if he catches you, it's usually night, night. Yeah. And I think that's what's going to happen here. Because um, I don't think there's a lot of people that can withstand the. That's why I give a lot of love to Fury. Fury stood up to the man. He stood up to him, and not a lot of people were able to do that. Yeah. And so um, I think. Um, you know, his opponent, Deontay Wilder's opponent, um, Helenus, is 6'6", mm -hmm. Wilder is 6'7". So, you know, you got a guy about the same height, even though Wilder has a reach on him. So it should be an interesting fight. Hopefully it's an interesting fight. Hopefully this guy can come in and give him some sort of fight, but I, I'm not sure if he could do it. Do, they have, do, you, have, do you have the weight of Helenus? Um, they don't show the weight yet because um, I guess, um, you know, before weight, I'm, I'm just going to say this one thing about Alanis, and I have not really seen him fight. The bigger they are, the harder they fall. <laughs> Which wasn't the case with Tyson Fury because he came and in pretty Again, hard. Tyson Fury is a special individual. Yeah. That's what be get a man his credit. And, and I think uh, when Vada does what he's supposed to do, if he does that, then we can say yes. People need to just quit slamming Wilder for that. Now many people being Fury. That's who he is, man. The dude is, he, he's a, a master chess player. And, he, and they have uh, Sugar Hill in his corner. They have a way of breaking down the opponents. And they take you to deep waters and they, and they take you down slowly. Speaking of deep waters, the next fight with uh, Anthony Durrell versus Caleb Plant. Caleb Plant really disappointed me in the Canelo Alvarez fight because he just ran out of gas during that fight. He was, seemed to be doing well and boxing really well. And that just shows me that you just weren't really in shape or you let the moment kind of overwhelm you and the moment was too big. But um, I want you to talk about this. We talked about a little bit off, off air, but talk about Anthony Durrell and, and what Caleb Plant is up against. Yeah, um, Caleb Plant fought Canelo. Uh, he boxed real well early and then he got caught late. I don't know if it was fatigue or he just couldn't keep it going. Uh, but Andy Durrell comes from a boxing family. Been through hell in a handbasket. I think you're out of Michigan, right? Been through a lot. Yeah. He, he and his brother. Uh, but Anthony Durrell is a kind of no nonsense. He's a fun, easygoing guy. Uh, even the guy's a great golfer. He say too. He's a good golfer. But they call him the dog for a reason. <laughs> he called him the dog for a reason I watched him fight uh, I went back and watched when he was a champion he fought David Benavidez and Benavidez beat him because he cut him and cut his eye and it was just a lot of stuff going on but anyway Caleb Plant likes to box mm -hmm. and he likes to move around like he did against Canelo he'll come in and bang a little bit but I think the, 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 the problem is going to be and I'm not saying he can't win the fight because the real is getting older He's so close that he's talking about retirement and everything like that, too. But he might have one last good fight in him. But I think we'll find out if Caleb Plant can stay away and just box, he might win the fight. But the one thing about it is if you engage with Anthony Durrell, it's gonna be it's gonna be it's gonna be two dogs fight. He's gonna entice you into that. Let's get at it. Pop, pop, pop. Especially if you think he can knock you out. So I think if if Plant engages into a fight could be a long night could be a long right. night. so uh, i know you mentioned um when we were offline about carissa shields and she's fighting on october 15th 
Um, this is the fight that I'm, I'm kind of looking forward to because this is the woman that beat her, I guess, earlier in her career, uh, before her pro career. So your thoughts? Yeah, I mean, sometimes you just kind of look at Clarissa Shields. You wonder if anybody can really match her. They keep trying to find people. They, you know, probably somebody to beat her up in the fifth grade. So, I mean, <laughs> she went back and got Marshall. And more. Marshall was like the last person to beat her. And she's always said Marshall's been living off her name, ducking. Not too many, there's not too many times where you see Clarissa Shields mad. She's pissed off because she's, she's been hearing this lady's name. They've been trying to find people. The only person she probably would, would fight more would be uh, uh, Layla Ali if she could, but that was a long time ago. But uh, she's angry. I don't think she's been this mad since I think it was her brother or somebody knocked somebody out that went in before the fight. So I think she's angry. She wants to prove a point. So I think that's what you're going to see from Clarissa Shield. She wants to say, I told y'all, don't be bringing nobody back up when I was in the eighth grade. <laughs> And they beat me up. So I think she has a serious point to prove. And I think she's going to do it. Now, something I admitted to you uh, early on, I, I did not want to watch this. I mean, my intentions were not to watch it, but I had my fill of football, college football on Saturday. And so I wanted to catch some of the fights we talked about last week. Did not catch those fights. And we, you'll talk about those later. But I did catch the Mayweather fight, the exhibition. There were some good fights on the card with different mixed martial arts, but... Mayweather's bodyguard got beat down. <laughs> so I don't know if he has a job with Mayweather as a bodyguard the way he got beat down. But um, it just it was just kind of sad to watch. They usually customary give you flowers before the fight. I don't know if you saw the clip of this, but when they gave Mayweather his flowers, the guy threw the flowers on the ground in front of Mayweather. I didn't know if that was staged or what. So Mayweather picked them up, handed it to his guy. And... The, the J Japanese fighter and mixed martial artist caught Mayweather a couple of times, some real good shots. And I guess it woke Mayweather up. It was like, oh, shit, I better do something in this fight uh, to knock this guy out of here before he gets the confidence to fight. And then Mayweather um, went to work and, and knocked him out. But um, it's just a sad, to me, it's a sad commentary. I know he's doing it for money. I know he's, he's making money. He's, I mean, the Japanese were very gracious. Um, it, it was a good fight night for them. But um, I, I, I did. Now I know why I don't watch exhibitions like this. <laughs> I really do. I, I, it does nothing for you, man. I've been I've been telling you that for how long? I've been telling yeah. you the difference between boxing and exhibitions. I mean, I'm not sure. I mean, Floyd does what Floyd does. When Floyd comes out and tells you, I'm no longer a boxer. I'm an entertainer. You got to take him at face. Yeah, value. and I got, I got it now. I, I got it. I when got he it. come out, and Floyd is no joke because, you know, he's about the business trying to entertain the people. But when he comes out and goes, yo, man, I'm an entertainer. I'm not a boxer anymore. I'm an entertainer. I'm an old man, but you want to give me so many millions? I'll do it. Yeah, I'll do it. And I think that's that's what you're seeing out of that. It was just sad. Um, the, the fights we talked about last week. Um, let me go to some of the results from last week. Um, let's see. Let's see. Let's see. You definitely got to talk about my son. Yeah. Uh, so last week, uh, Shakura Stevenson did not make weight. Mm -hmm and um, lost his belts. Yeah. So it, it only makes sense for him to go up and wait now, but it seems like he got frustrated in the fight and he, he got some points deducted from him or warnings um, uh, about throwing the other fighter down. Um, he just looked like to me, and the commentator said this too, and it, it kind of, it was very obvious that he has his grown man strength now, you know, Years prior, you could see him kind of emerging into it. Mm -hmm. Now you see he got the grown man strength. I'm wondering for you, is that going to turn into knockout strength? Because that's the only thing I see kind of missing from his game at this particular point, that knockout strength that he needs to put fighters away. That's a good question. Um, and I think people look at this, and I, when I looked at it, I'm like, man, he lost his belts. What happened? You know, I was like, oh, whatever. But I think that, 
he came to grips with who he's in, who he is, and people were so caught up that he lost his belts by not making weight. But I think he honestly came and said, you know what, man, he said he tried to lose 12 pounds over a certain period of time, and he couldn't lose like the last two pounds. And he says, y'all know what I have to do to try to do this. And, you know, I'm crying, I'm trying to get all this stuff out, doing all kinds of stuff, and it just didn't work. My body didn't agree with me. So he said, you got blood and all kinds of stuff coming out of my body. And like, nah. But I think they were like, we're going to let your body tell us when it's time to go up. And his body told him, 135, it's time to go. And I think that they were like, if that's the case, we're not worried about it. We're just going to move up. I think they had always had a plan, but I don't think they wanted to announce it to the world. All right, in December, blah, 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 we're going to go to 135. It was like, nah, man, it's too hard. So he just naturally said, I'm going to 135. But the beautiful thing is about it is you talk about grown man strength. Um, I think, I don't know if he's going to be a knockout artist and KO and people, but I think the fact that he's gotten stronger and what's going to happen is those uh, combinations are going to be more wicked. So it's not going to be maybe one punch, not Mike Tyson-esque, if you will, or Javante Davis-esque, but it's going to be combination. Bah, bah, bah. Bah, bah, bah. You know, oh, did you see that? Bah, bah, bah. So it's going to be more combinations in the fast uh, realm of it. But what's beautiful about it is, and I've been talking about this for a while, the possibilities at 135 for him are like amazing. And that's another question I want to ask you. What would be a better transition for him to transition into 135? Because there are a lot of good fighters in that in that weight class. Do you kind of just throw him into the to the to the pool, or who would he need to fight to kind of gradually move into this weight class and and con continue to win? Dude's on man, he, he on one speed, bro. <laughs> he he believe it too. He on one speed. I ain't saying you jump right out there, okay? So when I say that, you know, you can take a fight at 135 and go, okay, well, this is a safe fight. He ain't doing that. He might look at the, the three guys I'm looking at right now, thinking about, and he might take the lesser of the ones or somebody he always wanted to fight. And so the three guys, of course, Devin Haney is the guy, all right? Mm -hmm. Devin Haney has, has the belts, everybody like that. So Devin Haney is uh, there. Uh, I'm trying to think, Devin Haney, uh, of course, Tank Davis, you know, people want that fight. But I think Tank Davis and other things on his mind. But the one guy that I think, um, and then uh, the, I think uh, uh, also Ryan Garcia is like, what, like 140 now. So that's still a little bit higher. But the one guy that I think that uh, Secure Stevenson would want to fight right away, and he's fighting tomorrow, because he wants Haney. But I don't think he's going to take, this guy's not a stepping stone. He's not lower tier. But uh, it's Lomachenko. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Lomachenko. Yep, because it's, it's immediate. It's right away. So you, I just told you, Tank Davis, Lomachenko, Devin Haney. Lomachenko, because he truly believes that from a boxing standpoint, he can match him. It'd be a beautiful match. The question is, does Lomachenko want? Lomachenko probably go somewhere else. And uh, I heard he was uh, thinking about, was it uh, somebody else that he was, I don't know if it was uh, Laura. It was there, it was, you know, it might've been Laura. I okay. think I saw that. And they were supposed to be fight, fighting for some kind of interim belt. So he may get there first. But I think, uh, I think Shakur, Shakur really believes he can get with Lomachenko because it, it's a strategy. And, you know, I, I see you moving and around and everything, doing all them gestures. <laughs> but I'm going to say this to you. Secure Stevens can, can go, man. I know he yeah. can go, but Lomachenko, ugh, yeah. that's like biting off a lot. Lomachenko did lose now. Yeah, he lost, but he was hurt. Okay, well now he ain't gonna be hurt. So I, I just think that I, I I don't I mean maybe I'm saying it because it's my son, but and I'm not gonna put him on the Floyd level, but he has this unique ability to adapt like Floyd 
and and fight a certain style, depending on what you do. And when you make mistakes, he'll punish you. And I think he's real young, but I think he has such a crisp style. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. When you see him back up, pop, pop, and he'll, you know, he does get hit. I give you that because yeah. he's still young. You made but, an interesting point. Go ahead. That he, he, he capitalizes off his opponent's mistakes. And yeah. Lomachenko rarely makes mistakes. Yeah. Yeah, he does. He doesn't. But nobody's matches his IQ, boxing IQ of Lomachenko, like Shakur would. Shakur's a student, man. I mean, you Andre Ward told you that. <laughs> the dude's in the pocket. He, you know, you 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 keep doing that too many times. Bah, bah, bah. Bah, bah, bah. Now he fought a guy of uh, was a Conseco. Um, this guy was a tough customer. He was Olympic gold medalist, very physical fighter. He couldn't get him out, but he fought him with a kind of a keen awareness in a sense that he let him know, I got you. And you mentioned before that, you know, you saw him get frustrated. He said part of the frustration was that the referee was letting him hold and was hitting him yeah. on the brakes. Yeah. So, but, and I don't know people love the knockouts, but he clearly won the fight. And at the end of the day, Shakira wants to win the fights. He wants to knock people out. But if you can have a dominating performance and people may not like it, because in mind you're fluid, you have a dominating performance and beat Lomachenko at his own game, man. What would that say? Yeah, yeah. I mean, if he he did that, if that fight happened and he did that, uh, you know, whatever he want to do after that, I'm good with. But I I gotta see this because you you when you talk about Lomachenko, you're talking about a master boxer. Oh, yeah. well, if you can master and match that and exceed it, then okay, I'll give you the nod. But I got to see it. I, but, see, but that's my point, though. You got to start somewhere. Yeah. And I like it because he's not hes not going over here trying to find somebody, you know, at 135 that he can kind of test the waters. Nah, let's go. You want to go? 135? You want to go? Let me check out. Come on, let me check out. I, and I think he wants, he wants Devin Haney, but I think he knows those are bigger fight, money fights. Yeah, and Devin Haney's no, no joke. Yeah, Danny, I mean, and that, but that's a big money fight. Same way with Tank Davis. Yeah. Tank Davis, Tank Davis is gonna be there. He may not see Tank Davis till he get to 140, but that's okay. Like he said, I'll fight anybody, just put them on the paper. And Bob Arum also had Lomachenko in his camp. So that would be an easy fight, too. They both were top right. Okay, what's a lot to chew on? He's Ice Water, I'm Puma, and this is the fight game. Remix. Champion.